guess what? We get another formula for you. Okay, this is part 128, line 18A, 3SC, oh, sorry, line 18A, 3SC. Agroplas gas plas microwave CN H2 reactor cold plasma well study. So this is where um, each of these videos are talking about the different formulas for our UFO engine. And these are the things that are coming up from my Google search that we can possibly put together to create the speed. Okay. So this is an old plasma cracking of hydrocarbons. And again, this is another invention that I found. Um, a novel technology developed in a partnership between Agroplast AS and Glassplast AS makes it possible to turn biogas or natural gas into hydrogen gas and solid carbon. Now, I'm not sure, but if they can use this technology, and I know you use a type of hydrogen glass, gas that's cooled in your rocket boosters, so I'm wondering if you can use this technology with these calculations. I'm assuming you can because it came up with the well study signal. <laughs> Anything that comes up with a well study signal should work together. Okay? Hydrogen can be used as a fuel for vehicles. To produce heat and electricity or to produce a number of valuable products, carbon can be used to enhance biogas production, to make carbon enriched organic fertilizer, and to immo immobilize toxic materials in polluted soil and sediments. The technology uses Microwaves to get methane into the cold plasma state and enables profitable utilization of methane for energy and materials complete without emissions. So the, this is a green energy, by the way. So it's www.agroplast.no technology cold plasma. Okay. Microwave cold plasma can be used to turn methane into hydrogen gas and solid carbon. A less known method for producing energy and materials from methane is to use microwaves to get the methane into the plasma state. Microwaves are short electromagnetic waves, longer than infrared, but shorter than radio waves, that are produced when pulses of electrons are sent through a magnetic field. Okay, microwaves are commonly applied to heat food and liquids in your microwave ovens and to measure distance and detect moving objects and radars. I never knew that until I started doing this. I just thought microwaves were just, you know, something we stick on our kitchen counter. I was shocked find out they're using it for outer space. <laughs> That's where they found out about it. It's from black holes. I guess they have microwaves. When methane molecules are hit by microwaves in the gas blast reactor, the electrons bond between the single carbon C and the four hydrogen H atoms, making up the methane CH4 molecule are broken up. This turns the gas into plasma for some microseconds before the ions and electrons are recombined to solid clusters of thousands of carbon atoms. CN in various configurations in hydrogen gas H2. Microwave plasma is known as cold plasma since the microwave only hits electrons and not the atom nucleus, where virtually all the atom's mass is found, limiting the temperature as little as 200 degrees Celsius. This is very different from thermal or hot plasma, which is made by heating the whole atom molecule, causing the temperatures of 2,000 degrees Celsius or more. And you can read more about it on their website. Okay, cold plasma cracking of methane is widely used in industry. There are several hundred companies operating commercial microwave cold plasma processes, producing highly valuable materials such as diamond coatings on drill heads. These processes typically produce small volumes of products with high economic values. They operate at very low pressure, close to vacuum, and are batch processes, not operating continuously. It has been shown that microwave cold plasmas can be used to make highly valuable carbon products such as carbon nanotubes, carbon fibers, and carbon blocks. Now this is very important. We're going to need this technology to create our carbon nanotubes, which we're going to use for a space elevator. These highly valuable potential applications have, however, not been harnessed due to the threefold challenge. So it's still a challenge. They still haven't figured out what to do with this. Of producing industrial volumes of plasma, operating at atmospheric pressure, and achieving efficient separation of solid and gaseous products on a continuous basis. So this is a gas blast cold plasma reactor. That's what it looks like. And uh, I found groundbreaking technology and innovation. Gasplast has developed a groundbreaking new technology for production of hydrogen without CO2. 
This enables a truly clean hydrogen transport system with no CO2 emissions from well to wheel. And they show how it works. The hydrogen is extracted from hydrocarbons such as methane by means of low energy plasma cracking, providing dry carbon rather than carbon dioxide as a valuable byproduct. The gas plastic reactor is highly scalable and can be connected to existing natural gas networks to generate hydrogen on demand at point of use. The gas blast cold plasma reactor uses microwaves to crack biomethane into hydrogen and carbon black. The technology directs microwaves toward a continuous flow of methane and turns the gas into the plasma state for a very short while. After the plasma stage, gaseous hydrogen and solid carbon black is efficiently separated in the reactor. The process is efficient in small as in large scale and operates on a continuous basis at atmospheric pressure and can be adapted for a broad variety of applications. So the new function is, or formula, sorry, coal plasma plus methane uh, space elevator, carbon nanotubes, graphite mirrors, that's what came up in this. So February 10th, my thoughts, here we find some methods and new inventions that we can use for the muon bombardment frequency plus energy plus accelerate photocatalytic effect. And the next um, formula is laser plus heat plus argon gas plus neutrinos equals acceleration plasma. So we have the gas plus cold plasma reactor plus the VAS mirror plus the neutrinos plus the methane cracking plus carbon nanotubes plus graphite mirrors plus space elevator. I separated this particular data into three sections so we could look at each set of things in units. Line 18A, 3S6, muon, oxcort, ammonium pertrolate, argon gas, neutrinos, vasma rocket, while SETI. And line 18A, 3S6B is NASA LIDAR 5G laser pulse neutrino propulsion while SETI. And then we have line 18A, 3S6C which is the agroplast, gas plast, microwave, CNH2, reactor, cold plasma, well study. It's up to those who invented these things to get together. Compare notes and see what you can come up with in relation to the propulsions required for a 5G force UFO engine. Take a look at all the data provided about neutrinos, add the mathematical equations that are mentioned in each video, and put it all together to develop the new alien technology that is required to meet this goal. So you want neutrinos plus gas plus mathematical functions plus the calculations plus equations plus jet propulsion ideas. You can find all these on line 24, 22, 28FY, 18U, 18M, 18K, 18J, 18I, 18G, 18E, 18D, 18B, 18A, 3Z3, 18A3X, 18AS4, 18A, 17T2, 17T, 17K, and 16B. Again, most of these videos have not been filmed. They are currently in the process of being researched. Okay? But I do look at the keywords, and I'm starting my cross-referencing in some of the videos. I guess I did a few of them with cross-referencing because I noticed that the words were coming up, so then I started working on it. So February 20th, 2012, my thoughts continued. I took some of this data here about the propulsion technology for the UFO engine and added the components for the space elevator because they, be, they came up together. And I did take some stuff that I got from this series and I added it to my space elevator um, set of videos. A space elevator is really exciting because <laughs> the stuff I come up with is unbelievable. NASA's been trying to design a space elevator elevator called a skyhook probably for the last 30 years and they haven't figured out how to get it to work. So I'm excited because I came up with an idea of what they can do and I don't know if it'll work or not but maybe they can get it to work. And I figure if it came up well it's going to mean something right? So we have a space elevator plus a carbon oh, okay I'm running out of time here. Space elevator plus carbon nanotubes plus graphite mirrors. Again, line 18A3, I'm just not going to read it, okay? I'm just going to show it to you. Again, these will be on the notes for you.